All right. Welcome back, GM Nation. This is your host, Jimmy Chris. Oh, my, my bad. <laughs> yeah, this show is tough as hell. Sequel Skills Productions. Welcome back, GMB Nation. This is your host, GMB Grace, aka GMB X, and today we're going to be reacting to uh, one of my favorite YouTubers. Uh, this is a biography on them by Before They Were Famous. Yes, yeah, Michael Crudden. He usually does this Before They Were Famous thing where he would review and give like a, a biography on famous YouTubers or rappers or celebrities in general, internet stars or whatever may be the case. And just give a before they were famous and then sometimes after they were famous. Let's get into it. Before they were famous, favorite YouTube group, Party C One. Comment like make me famous in the like for real. Before RDC World would gain over 3 million subscribers on YouTube, clock in nearly a million followers on Instagram, and each member would have their own legion of fans. Never stop chasing your dad. They got like 3 million now? 3 million subscribers? Hold on. Well, that was damn, that was last year though. This 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 biography was made last year, so they've got way more than that now. Let's see how much how many subscribers they got now. It's been a minute. It's been a little grip. Oh, okay. They almost a four million now. So they grown by the thousands. All right, all right. Let's get back into the video. Your dreams. I mean, of course it's going to be hard and the road's going to get bumpy, but you know, you got to keep going. Before the boys of RDC World would hit trending with the recent drops, Anime House 3, and clock in millions of views with when you realize you're a side character in anime and how Chick-fil-A workers was when they heard about the new Popeye's chicken sandwich. <laughs> what? How? Go. 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 Goat, he is a goat, man. They the goats, bro. I don't care what nobody say, bro. Ain't no YouTuber group doing it better than them right now. Like it used to be Rocka Rocka, but then they just like fell off after a while and started doing stupid. But these guys right here are legit. Like they, they are like, man, they it. They didn't. They they already, they already next up. They 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 here, man. They here with it. They here to stay. I mess with them. And they make it for where, like, it's for everybody. Like, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Family friendly, you know what I'm saying? They don't make it where it's just for, like, like raunchy, just for adults or whatever like that. They make it where it's for, like, everybody. Everybody can watch it. That's why I mess with them, though. I rock with that. But besides that, though, let's get back into the video. Before, hold on. Hold on. Let me pause. Hey, baby, you okay? Yeah. You doing your makeup still? Yeah, baby. Okay. Um, what was I about to say? You okay with um staying on the phone with me? Or did you just want to call me back? Or I didn't know how, you, I didn't know if you was. No, I was staying on the phone. All right, babe. Cause I know you was listening to your music, but you know I was doing the reactions and stuff, so I ain't wanna. But thank you for uh, thank you, thank you for supporting me, and um, spending this time together. You get to see what I do behind the scenes, so it's a little different. Yeah, I'm not used to being watched while I'm doing a reaction. But this is a little different. It's pretty cool though. But all right, I'm about to go ahead and finish uh finish up this reaction. Okay. All right, babe. Alright, get back into the video. Who is this guy? 
<laughs> I know Hisoka's enjoying this. Before they started their own anime and gaming convention called DreamCon, and before their real dreams would change the world. But my number one dream out of all those is to be. Dang, that boy Mark look hella young. Yeah, I remember my first. It's weird to look back at your old videos. Like, my first YouTube video, yo, I look so freaking young. Look, Leo. Me and Leo. <laughs> yeah, Leo. I look like I just came out the womb. <laughs> yo, it's weird to look back at old videos, man. Like, like the video that started everything, man. Wow. All right, but yeah. This man, Mark, bro. I'm a mangaka. I know y'all don't know what that is, so don't look at me like I didn't just say it. It basically means to have your own manga, which is like a comic book that will eventually turn into its own show. RDC World 1 is short for Real Dreamers Change the World, and the one I'm guessing, well, the name had probably already been taken. Now, they're a group of friends led by Mark Phillips who originally wanted to create their own anime show. But breaking into traditional media, it's no easy feat. And after some failed attempts at... See, that's why a lot of... Uh, that's a good tactic. And I love using that tactic where you, like, turn it, turn things into acronyms because it could be a mouthful. Because that's a long game. Real dreamers change the world. Like, imagine having to type in that whole thing on YouTube. But instead, they compressed it so it's just the letters RDC World 1. And that's why, like, that's, see, that's why I mess with them. They, they, they right here with it. They right here with it. But, you know, I did the same thing with my channel because I, I was going to do it where I have my whole name. But I was like, that's a mouthful. I know nobody want to type in somebody's whole name when they could just type in initials. So that's why I thought, I was like, maybe if I use my initials, that'll sound better instead of saying my whole government name like i work for the cia or some shit. but yeah that's why I, that's why my name's gmb on the on the channel but back to the video getting the work seen by companies well it was decided that him and his fellow loving anime and manga buddies well they would create comedy skits for youtube now their come up it didn't happen overnight in fact it took them three years just to get two thousand subscribers well, look at them now. Working at Krispy Kreme is kind of like my dream job at the moment, but I never get comfortable because I know there are better things for me later in life, like maybe getting YouTube famous. I'm looking at you, Swoozie. Did I even wink right? What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Michael McCrudden, documenting the life and career of RDC prior to YouTube fame. Here for you, of course, and before they were famous. Now, the crew just hit 3 million subs, and we had to get their full story for you guys because you requested it in the comments down below. We've covered other big YouTubers like Live Love Serve and DJ Ghost, so you can check those out after this one. Let us know who's next. And we also got a trivia question for you guys. What song did Afyong play in ISS off a Razor cell phone that got his classmates dancing? Ooh, yeah, that's a tough one. If anyone knows it, place a guess down below. And if you get it right, well, I owe you a follow over on Instagram or Twitter. All right, let's get into this video. <laughs> Be sure to subscribe and hit that and get closer. <laughs> oh, it still works. Still works. Still works. These commercials got Bam. Bam. Boom! I really feel like y'all met the team. So here, meet the team. RDC World is comprised of Mark Phillips, born on September 16th, 1994. There's his cousin Leland Meningo, born on October 16th, 1995. There's Young Harris, born on June 8th, 1995. Desmond Johnson, born on May 10th, 1994. Also Ben Skinner and Dylan Patel. Now I'm sorry if I butchered anyone's name. You know, I'm not from Texas. I'm also pure Irish. Anyway. It looks like all these boys, they came straight out of Texas. Seriously, sorry if I got any of those names wrong. <laughs> the story of RDC World, it begins with Mark Phillips, who is from Waco, Texas, located between Austin and Dallas. Now, we grew up in a middle-class home with three sisters, two big brothers, and two loving parents. We actually found a photo of them on Instagram. I started in this middle-class home with that one little tree in the front yard y'all see on the left. And that is probably why I'm so dark right now, because I had no shade. In elementary school, oh, Mark, so he dark. loved playing dodgeball with his friends. We actually found a Draw My Life from way back in the day. It was the only sport I really liked because, uh, you know, 
I like the concept of dodging balls. Besides, pause. <laughs> it's the way he said it. I like the concept of dodging. Like, no, you don't just say that. You don't just say I like the concept of dodging balls like that. This is. You gotta say pause afterwards. But no, I would love to be on this channel though. That would be so dope. But they live all the way in Texas. Like, damn. I wish they did like their DreamCon thing in different states, but you gotta go to Texas just to go to their the, um, DreamCon. I'm like, damn. I know it'd be lit too, because they'd be having all the other famous YouTubers from, from Vine and shit. Man. Anyway, back to the video. Ducking, dipping, diving, and dodging balls left and right. Well, Mark, he was also a storyteller. I know in elementary school, my happiness was at its peak. That's also where I learned that I'm an exceptionally good storyteller. Exceptional. He used to make up comedy stories that would include all his friends within the storyline. Then one day while he was in gym class, well, his teacher told him to never lose his smile. Don't ever lose that smile. Because nigga, that fit you got on with that smile, gonna get you some holes. Nah, I'm just playing. Um, but she did say, Jay, don't ever lose that smile. I, I just can't remember the rest. In middle school, he began to fall in love with anime and playing video games. Now, Mark, he always did well in school and he had a group of friends that he hung out with every day in middle school. Now, his best friends, they were named Elijah and Brandon. And the three of them, they were always joking and laughing in class. But unfortunately, Elijah, he got in with the wrong crowd and stopped hanging out with them. And Brandon, well, he just stopped talking to Mark. So going into high school, well, he was all on his own. He made new friends and he continued his love for gaming at the time. He was playing Modern Warfare 1 and 2, Naruto, and Gears of War. See, he's a GOAT. He play all the good stuff. You know what I'm saying? We got Naruto. You did? Okay. We got Call of Duty. Okay. I miss with Gears of War, but you know, maybe if he's doing some Uncharted, you know what I'm saying? We might be, you know what I'm saying, right there with it. No, after high school, he wasn't planning on going to college. Mark's original dream, well, was actually to become a manga artist. Now, the plan was that he would be the writer and his friends, they would be the illustrators. And his friends, well, they all of a sudden became less and less interested in the project over time. Damn kids in high school, no one's got any work ethic these days. And we didn't tell many people our dreams, but we did tell two people. And that was uh, Desmond and Lila. And we put them in the group. I don't even know what they did. They really didn't do nothing. But we put them in there because, you know, we were close to them. And we didn't want to hide no secrets from them. Now, after adding in the new members, the group sent in their work to companies, but they got no replies. No, Mark, he got really discouraged. His goal one day was to have his own anime show, but with no interest in their project, well, it seemed like a faraway goal. I started to beat myself over it, beat myself up over it. And that's what you're about to see right here. That's me, you know, give me the three piece and the Bruce Lee kick. Now, him and his friends who had started the original drawings, they Yo, I feel this man like his 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 upbringing and the way that he like wanted to like start his own you know show and all that stuff, but like the way companies are, they only go off of like if you already like a part of the company or if you're like a big time celebrity or some shit. But like if you're like starting from the dirt or starting from scratch, it's like they don't even pay you no mind. It's like you're a fly on the wall. So that's why I just like, I love the, that's why I always love the concept of YouTube because YouTube allows you to just be yourself or be who you want to be and be able to put that on the platform for everybody to see. And it's not, and it's like either you get the, uh, what you call it, the feedback for it or you don't get the feedback for it. But at least you're given a chance rather than just ignored and not given a chance at all. And that's why people, that's why YouTube is, that's why the internet is bigger than TV right now. That's why everybody be on the internet more than the TV right now. Like people still watch TV, but it's just like, we got so many options now. And with YouTube, a lot more people want to be on YouTube than actually become an actor and be on TV because it's, it's, they, they make it too hard. They make it too hard to, to accomplish your dreams and YouTube just allows you to be able to do stuff freely on your own and be able to do it on your own time. You don't have to worry about, oh, I missed the appointment for this acting job, so now I can't become the next big thing. But at least with YouTube, you're always given a chance. You could be gone for like months 
there's big YouTubers that be gone for months, come back, and they still get the love because their fans um, understand their uh, situation, what they might be going through. Where if you was an actor, you'd be gone for a while, or if you're a musician, you gone for a while. They'd be like, "Oh, he he um uh, he uh, canceled. He not he not he not the same anymore. He didn't drop that album." You know what I'm saying? Like, for example, with Playboy Cardi or, or Lil Uzi, they haven't dropped music in a while. But when they finally do, you know what I'm saying, everybody's showing the love that they deserve. But what happened in between, you know what I'm saying, where they was just like trying to chill, you know what I'm saying, take a take time. But that's that's enough of my rant. I'm just saying, that's why I like YouTube. That's why I love YouTube. That's why I do YouTube. It's because it allows me to do what I want to do. And have a platform to do it. Back to the video. They decided to come up with a new plan. They wanted to find a way to show their work to the world. So that's when they came up with the idea of starting a YouTube channel. Now, uh, this was all about their manga and it was called The Resistance. I actually found it online. And currently, well, it's got under a thousand views. Not bad, right? But only 887 views. I was the seventh. It really goes to show you how tough it can be to get any traction on YouTube. Now, at first, Desmond and Leland, they were all in on the channel, but after their early videos weren't getting many views, well, they got discouraged and they weren't as interested in making the vids. So with no official deal for their manga, well, it was off to college for Mark. He attended the University of North Texas where he graduated with a degree in integrative studies. And then in May of 2017, he made headlines worldwide when he photoshopped his graduation photos into famous- Yo, I remember that. When he, when Mark photoshopped all his graduation pictures and put them as actual album covers, like famous album covers, that was fire. Like, Yo, all these album covers, everybody should know, or at least like, you know what I'm saying, everybody that knows the culture should know, you know what I'm saying, like, we got the Logic album, we got the J. Cole album, we got the Chance the Rapper album, we got the Kendrick Lamar album, we got the Drake album, man, come on, if y'all, yo, that's why he the GOAT, man, he goaded, bro, he was goaded after he did that, bro. Cause that went viral on Twitter. I remember that. That jump was lit. I was like, yo, my boy. I remember I saw it on Instagram. I was like, my boy. My boy Mark doing big teams. Big teams. This album covers. Take a look. All right, I got to give some airtime to the other members of this group. So Leland, take it away. All right, Leland Manio. Now, if you were a fish, what kind of fish would you be and why? Well, I think I'd probably choose a clownfish. And why is that? Because Nemo is clean as hell. Oh! No Mark and Leland, they're cousins, and, uh, well, their friend, his name's Desmond Johnson. Desmond, take it away. You look like a ladies' man, right, ladies? No! There's also Affiong Harris. Yo, I always thought that Desmond was swole as hell. I was like, bro, why wow, this man, this man looked like he was born in the gym. I, it's like, I couldn't, I couldn't even imagine him slim. So, like, seeing him younger and he was slim, I was like, yo... This man really built bodies. This man really took bodies, man. I, I'm pretty sure he probably had to kill a man to get that that body, bro. Cause like, how you th this nigga like swole, like he on some Arnold Schwarzenegger type of swole, like you. you if you see the pause, take it away. Effion Harris. Um, your first question would be if you were president of the United States of America. What would your first change be? My first change... Okay. I would make a law oh. that would require every light-skinned girl to have to text back 10 minutes after they get a text. 10 minutes? No, these dudes, they were... <laughs> he said if he was president, he would make a law that every light-skinned girl texts back 10 minutes after they get a text. Ah! <laughs> Bro, if you ever text with a light skinned girl, like if y'all ever text with a light skinned girl, y'all will understand why the hell he said that. Cause I swear, they act like they look, they they literally on their phone. They see your message, but they they want to do everything but answer that shit. I swear, y'all light skinned girls be on something. Y'all be on something, man. 
We're always hanging out and joking together in college, and the group of friends decided to start a new channel, this time with the goal of creating funny comedy videos and skits. Now they wanted to gain the attention of the people, but they always had the goal of going back to their original dream of creating manga. Now their first video that's still up, it's called Hilarious Home Videos, and this was posted back in 2012. Oh, oh. What's this, Digimon? No. <laughs> this Pokemon. I know that, but who the f are they? Oh, that's Silent and Iris. So who is that? That's the new Squirtle. Uh, are you serious? Yeah. Is he, is he still trying to catch them all? I mean, it has to be at least a good 700 now. No. Uh, he's, he's still trying his best. Yeah. Uh, now, the video might not look like much, but the comments today read, at 000, legends were born. Now the second video that's still on their channel is called Home Alone 4 Official Video and it currently has over a million views. Yeah, Pink, yeah. I gotta go back and watch these old videos that they made because I didn't even know that existed. That is not funny though. This is awkward. So the editing might be pretty basic at first, but the videos were hilarious from the beginning. The team, they began to build an audience and grow their subscriber base over time. After a year of having the channel, well, they had 300 subscribers. Special thanks to all my fans, my 300 subscribers, and a million, but hey. Yeah, it really goes to show you that growth can take time. Now the boys, they- Damn sure. He is, he ain't lying. Growth can take time. You've been on this channel for fucking, what, how long? Three years. I need my 1K right now. <laughs> I need it. Like SpongeBob from fucking, uh, I'm gonna edit this out. They enjoyed making skits so much that they kept creating. It's not like every video they dropped was going viral, but they were slowly building an audience. They did have some massive videos over the years, like how to kidnap a person with over a million views, things I hate about summer, which also has over a million, if Disney Channel was black, which has more than 3 million, and how to roast, which is close to 5 million views. Well, <laughs> I remember that one, that was hilarious. Your hat's too poofy. Bro, where are you squinting at? I'm looking for the color in the socks. Where is it? Ooh, damn. Ooh, no, don't do that, man, like that. Now, their uploads, they weren't that consistent because, well, the boys, they were busy at school. And when I'm not working, I'm at school and they over here signing me essays like I'm an author. Either that or they got me preparing for class speeches like I'm Obama. Plus, while in college, <laughs> he said either that or they got me preparing for class speeches like I'm Obama. <laughs> Yo, I swear. I'm gonna sit down and just react to their old videos when I get the chance. Cause this, yo, mad funny. They old videos are mad funny. Just the, just these small clips, bro. Come on. Happy Young, well he started working at Krispy Kreme Donuts. So you know, that ate up a lot of his time. Looks like he didn't even eat one himself. No comment. Everyone asks for a hot donut, regardless of whether the hot light is on or not. Yeah, I want a dozen donuts and I want them to be hot. I'm sorry, at the moment we're not really giving hot donuts right now. Are they still fresh? It's surprising how many people ask me that question. But they kept producing content, and by 2015, they had 1 million. What are you talking about, Nick? We just hit 2,000. They had 2,000 subscribers. Yeah. That's all right, 2,000? Hey, 2,000 a lot too, y'all. But later in the year, the channel, it had gotten 15,000 subscribers. Then later, it was bumped up to 30K. Now they kept posting skits and funny videos and building their audience. Then some other NBA content, it blew up online, where Mark, he would act like LeBron and his friends would be the teammates. And uh, well, they did the same for Golden State. And then the channel, it started to blow up. LeBron, where are you going? To Miami! Good job, the trash! Yo, I showed this to my grandma. This was the whole, most funniest video they ever made. That locker room, how LeBron was in the locker room, had me rolling, bro. That was the best skit. Yo, <laughs> my grandma was dying laughing, bro. That, they the ghosts, man. When they can make your grandma laugh, they the ghosts. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> we lost by 33 points! You can't get mad at us because you can't capitalize. I can't capitalize! Jay, how many points you had? Five. Fuck. 
They did the same type of content about rap and anime and continued to grow their fan base. Then in 2016, the channel had over 100,000 subscribers. It just goes to show you that things, they can often take a little longer than you might imagine. But if you're persistent, well, you can really grow something amazing from scratch. Now, around the same time that Mark was going viral for his graduation photos, well, all of a sudden the channel, it hit 1 million subscribers on YouTube. And then he posted this touching video, well, for all his fans talking about his success. I remember in high school, he was telling me, I have no talent just because, you know, I wasn't playing basketball or football or none of that. I love anime, so I made anime videos. Them hoes blew up. Just talking about them watch anime. Somebody watching that motherfucker because we blew up off of it. The boys also made it more acceptable to admit a love for anime. They said in an interview. With Yo, now I remember. Yo, now I remember why I watched them. Okay, the first time I ever watched them was, um, and was it? I think it was. It was like an anime reference or something. Like, I think it was like how anime is in real life. And when I saw that, I was like, yo, I got to watch these dudes videos. They're hilarious. It was anime in real life. And they had their different versions of it. And that was what really blew them up. That's what really made me watch. That's what made me tune in. Because I was like a heavy fan of anime. And, you know, people don't like to talk about it like, you don't like, you know, back then people didn't like to talk about they were like fans of anime, especially growing up when you're getting older, like you're in high school and stuff, they think you're a nerd and stuff like that. But after a while, it became accepted, became a part of the culture, and now everybody messes with anime. And it's still stereotype it where like if you watch anime, you're a nerd still, but like it's more appreciated than it was back then, rather than it was back then. And that's why, that's why we you know what I'm saying anime's anime lit now. And that's why I missed RDC World 1, man. Tube filter. I believe that people have always watched anime, but they were just scared to admit it due to a number of reasons. One of those reasons being that they were afraid of what people would think of them watching it. Exactly. Took the words out of my mouth. I strongly believe that we paved the way for people to become more comfortable with their passion for watching anime through the content that we create. That's where a ton of our core fan base derive from. Now, later on the group. I was that time. <laughs> I was that time. They added new member, Ben Skinner. So Ben, take it away. And what's your name, young man? I'm Ben Skinner. Ben Skinner. Well, you look spiffy, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Also, Dylan Patel. So Dylan, take it away. It's me and Desmond versus the boys, Dylan and Lee. You know what I'm saying? They ain't gonna talk or something. Now currently the group, they continue to make great content and they're also making some big moves. I got a feeling it's just the beginning for these boys. Also, I forgot to mention, Afyong, his grandfather, he worked at a probation officer, but then he became a substitute teacher after retirement. He became a substitute teacher for a while. And I'm not exactly sure how one goes from being a probation officer to a sub, or how easy it even is to be a sub, but I would love to be a substitute teacher. Then one day while in ISS, he got to use his grandfather's Razor phone and played Gold Digger by Kanye West. See, animations like this remind me of Swoozy. I want to do animations like this, um... You know what I'm saying? In my own style, of course, but I I'm um I'm gonna make it happen. Y'all y'all stay tuned for that. I, I got some story times on the way. Y'all stay tuned for that. And there you have the answer from our trivia at the beginning. Who the hell got that right? If you did, I certainly owe you a follow. Whew, what a weird trivia question. As for the rest of the story, well, I think we're gonna wrap this one up here because this is before they're famous. My name is Michael McCredden. We make all sorts of celebrity bios here for you on this channel. We do a lot of YouTubers. We do athletes. We do rappers. But we need to know who's next from you guys in the comments down below. So hit us up. I'll be reading through all your comments. I'll see you guys in another video. Boom! Thank you. I love each and every one of you in RDC OUT. Thank you. I love each and every one of you in GMB OUT. Sequel Skills Productions. Oh.